Amen. Well, welcome everybody coming in online. We've been praying for you guys. And I'll tell you what, how many people like that extra hour today? I know I did because I had an extra hour to pray for us today. And you say, man, he's excited today. I'm excited every day. But, but I tell you, today, uh, the Lord has just really revealed some cool things to me about his love. How many people know that the Lord loves you? Oh, come on, tell me like you mean it. Do y'all realize that? Yeah, man. I'm going to tell you what. So how much more should we love people? We already got quiet. <laughs> we love it when it's coming our way, man. But I pray through the message today that we take a look and listen and see what's going on. How does God want us to live our life? How does he want us to be his hands, his feet, his ears? Uh, you know, each of those things as a part of the body of Christ. Let's do it. So with that being said, I just want to say God morning to everybody. And I love today's title. If you got your uh, Bibles with you, we're going to be in Psalm 34, 8. Uh, I've got most of the scriptures up here. But it says, stop running. Start believing and begin living. Amen. As I was praying this week, this is exactly what God had shown me. Stop running. Start believing and begin living. So we're going to cut through that. And I, I really love the title because guess what? It makes us have to put our big boy pants on and evaluate our life, doesn't it? It really does. It really brings us there and says, hey, you know what? And, and let me tell you this. I say this every week and I'm just going to pull it right on down in the front. I am preaching to me first. See, these messages, I don't just give them for other, everybody else. They're for me, too, to pour through my life. So we're in this thing together. If you believe that, say amen. 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 So we look at this, and I really think that our lives, at some time or another, we're in these three categories. So, you know, you think about it, living life and just going through things and stuff. But sometimes, how many know that we need to make an adjustment sometimes? Sometimes a lot. A lot of adjustments. How many think, has anybody ever said something they wish they didn't say? Man, we're on, the, we're on the right thing. Yeah. You're going, ooh, ooh, bring that back here. You know, different things like that. There's adjustments and, and stuff like that. And a lot of times at the end of the day, I've done this since I was a little kid. A little kid, I lay in bed and I'm praying and I'm laying back and I'm thinking about the day. Y'all ever do that process the day? And you know, you process and you think about work or something and you think about something you said and you're like, well, I really don't understand why they responded like that. And then you play it over in your mind and you go, ooh, that wasn't good. <laughs> that wasn't good. So God gives us those, those promptings to adjust our life. And, you know, I tell today that, you know what, there's always something to be adjusted so that we continue to line up with God. But we make the adjustments from God's standpoint, through his word. That's, that's what's holding us together here. So I just want to start off with a couple of questions here and thought about this. Things can really become just habits, can't they? Anybody ever had a bad habit of trying to quit? It's not easy. You know, I love food, man. I love carrot cake. Thank you, John, for bringing that last night. It was good. And he had the nerve to cut him in half. He had him in half. I was like, I, I said, he, he had he cut him in half. I was like, what did I do wrong? I said, I'll take that big one. I, got, I had to get in there before he cut my piece, you know. And Tim said, well, I'm just going to eat one of these. I said, well, you know what? If you eat both halves, that's really like having two pieces. I'm going to get two big ones. That's the same equal, right? That's, that's buck row math, but it's good, boy. It's rough on your waistline, but it's good on your stomach. So I appreciate all you guys do. And we have fun in the midst of that. But sometimes we just get in a habit. I never want to get in a habit of just going to church. You know what I mean? Because you're missing out. I don't just go to church. I come here to get filled up. How about you guys? I come here to see my brothers and sisters. I come here to worship the Lord. Now, look, we all know that we don't have to be in church to worship the Lord. But we get to come and worship together. I don't know about you guys. As you can tell, I'm probably not the most introverted person. Amen? I like people. I like people. You know? And so we have a party. We get together. I mean, I like people coming over. I'm like telling people, you got to move the car. You can't park on the circle. We got people coming. You know? I love that. So we still got room for you guys. Come on. So, you know, it, it, I, I enjoy that because you learn from people, right? My buddy says this. I work with a fella, and uh, maybe he's listening today. He, he said, you know what, man? It's like this. You're either a lesson or a blessing. Which one are you going to be? <laughs> I said, I like that. How many are going to learn from you, or are you going to be a blessing? You're either a lesson or a blessing. I thought that was pretty good. So, Scott, if you're listening, I, I am listening, brother. And so, you know, we have a good time. But also, sometimes we can get comfortable. Oh, man, we just get comfortable. Oh, man, ain't going to start till 10. I get there whenever I get there. Yeah, Katie's going to do a couple songs, okay. Man, buddy's still talking. You know, what's going on? What happens if everybody was just excited when they got here? I mean, a line, a line out there. Start at 8 o'clock. Man, people start coming in there. 
You know what? You know what? This would probably help if I, I didn't tell you all we're putting fifty dollars on each of the front row seats. And I, <laughs> that's because we ain't. But <laughs> everybody said we should have got up front. You know. But you know we like having fun. But think about that. Are you excited about that? Now you nobody. And, and I'm not picking. I'm just. This is just kind of. I'm talking about excitement, man. I'm talking about getting ready because we have the opportunity. You don't show up at the races over there the last minute, do you? I'm not dogging him. I've said this all the time. I don't care if you come 15 minutes late. I just, uh, I'm just happy that you come. But I'm talking about excitement. We get comfortable. I know things happen. Cars don't start. People oversleep. I'm not coming in from that angle. I'm talking about are you being excited about being in God's house? I pray that you are, man. I want you guys to be able to take something away that you can apply to your life right now. What else? Sometimes we have habits with just a crutch. Whatever it is, it's just a crutch. Oh, man, I would, but I can't. I should, but I won't. All these things. What happens if you came face to face with a God that could just annihilate those things and you got a clear path to Jesus? That's what Jesus has done. You got a clear path at the cross to God, man. I want to I want to encourage you guys today. And here sometimes we just we just kind of run from God and we're going to get into that in a minute because we lack understanding. You know? How many people at uh, 30 or up wish they knew what they know now at maybe 20? <laughs> Hands everywhere. And if, you're, if, and if you're over 50, I know their hand's going to come up, you know? You know, think about that. It, and it could be a lot of things, you know? I, I think back, and I say this a lot of times, it's amazing how smart my dad got from age 25 in my life to 30. I used to say, I said, man, that poor guy, he's probably not even going to come out of the rain. You know, uh, that poor old fella, come on, yeah, yeah. And then I got another year on me, <laughs> and I got a family. And I got things going on. I'll be like, let me call that old guy. See, he's doing. Dad, what do you think about that? Dad, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. You know, he started talking about all these words that he said before started making sense. Like budget. <laughs> What's a budget? That's what I've been telling you. You know, seeking the Lord. All those things. You know, all those things. And so, if my dad, earthly dad, had good info. How much more good info does my heavenly father have? Yeah. Woo, that's what I'm talking about. So, so don't, get, don't put it all on dads and moms. Open the book and get it from your heavenly father. Amen? So there's no excuse because it's available to us. Amen? So with all that being said, kind of getting this unpacked on the front end, let me ask you a personal question. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to grunt. You don't have to groan. You don't have to smirk. You don't have to nudge your neighbor. It's for you. All right? Today is the 5th of November, right? Are you at a place in your life that you are running from God, believing in God, or living out your life through the power of God? We're probably in one of those places, right? Just think about that. And I, I guess y'all were listening good because nobody even moved. It just went. <laughs> I love it. But think about that. Are you using your time wisely? Are you putting the proper time in to what God called you to do? He's called you to do something, you to do something. You know, everybody has a calling on their life. Are you constantly pursuing a deeper relationship with the Lord? I talked to a friend of mine that, that really spoke into my life, a younger guy, younger than me, but, uh, and he's getting a little age on him now. He's got, got about three kids now and all that stuff. And he said, uh, but I want to talk to you. He says, uh, they've asked me to be a deacon at my church. I said, well, uh, that's probably not the first time they asked you, have they? He said, no. He said, but uh, I'm going to step out in that. I said, good. Because you've been doing this all along. You've been minister, ministering to people all along, brother. You know? And he started talking to me. He says, you know, over the years when we talk, and we don't talk all the time now. Every, you know, it's, when you get that good friend, you can just pick up the phone and you start right back where you were. He says, one thing that, that, you know, that you've told me over the years is this. It's all about the relationship. I tell my kids, even in business, I say, it's about relationships. It's about relationships. Investing in people. Investing in in." in one another, but you know, through a kingdom perspective. And he says, as I was praying about whether I should step up to the plate and do this or not, he said, all I could hear you say is, it's about relationships, it's about relationships. And I thought, man, I haven't even talked about that in a while. But sometimes somebody will say something and spark that in your spirit, and you just hear it over and over and over. So I don't know what God's going to reach out to us today and talk to us, but grab hold of that. And line it up with God's word. So think about that. I want to say this again. Are you at a place in your life that you're running from God, believing God, or living out 
your life in the power of God. Everybody doing good? Say amen. Here's something else. One more piece to just, just I want to feather that out. How are your goals stacking up against last year's desires? Okay? You got to be purposeful in things, man. You got to be purposeful in things. I'm preaching to me. Are you still running from God? Are you still doubting God? And so I said, today let's start believing God and watch what he will do in and through us. Amen? Does that sound like a fair place to start? I think so. So with that being said, I want to read our scripture today. And here we go. Psalm 34, 8, it says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Man, that's a good one to memorize right there. That's a good one to hold on to. And it ain't a bad one to hold on to, is it? But I want to tell you what. I want to give us the tools today. So first off, I want to start with the running. How many people enjoy running? Well, you guys are young. (laughs) I got folks I got folks under 20 going, yeah, and everybody else going, I ain't much on. You know, uh, that's something. I, li- I like it better now with my new knees than I did before. But, but think about that. I, wa- I want to look at this. I said, we've all done this at some time. Some harder than others, right? Run hard. And we turn around, and we like to take that alternate path. Man, we used to run. Get going. Running. You know, we'd get in trouble at baseball, and they'd say, okay, take a lap. And we'd be messing around. Next thing you know, the lap we were taking started getting smaller and smaller. And get shorter and shorter. But my baseball coach had a perfect solution for that. He said, all right, everybody, come on over here. Y'all ain't listening too good. I'm going to help you with that. Uh, how many bats we got? We got plenty of bats. Oh, we got bats. Everybody brought their bats. They got their bats. Good. We'll grab your bat. I said, oh, it's batting practice. He said, no, put it over your head. Hold it right there. Now run. Run around. About five more laps. Next thing you know, yeah, you say, oh. Yeah, I'm good. Next thing you know, you're like this. It's on your head. Next thing you're down like this. You're back over here. He said, now are you listening? We go, yeah. Throw me the ball. I go. <laughs> he got my mind right, didn't he? You know what I'm saying? He, he got my attention. I'm praying that we don't have to run around with a bat over our head to get, for God to get our attention. Amen. It was effective, though. Everybody, so what would happen was you start policing one another. Because that guy started cutting in there. He said, man, please don't go that close. Go all the way down the line. Go down the line, you know, because we know what's coming. But think about that. A lot of times we just don't listen, do we? We hear, but we don't listen. And I pray today that we are listening to what God has for us. Take a look at this. You, we, we run a lot. And think about this. I wrote a couple things down. I said, run it away. Right. It's the most foolish exercise known to man, running away. I think running is good. It's healthy. But why would we run opposite to a all-loving God, to a forgiving God? I mean, if you just think about it, let's logically think about it. Because when you don't want to run, you start thinking, I, I, could, I could probably take a shortcut or something. There's no shortcuts with God. Just, I guess there is a little shortcut with God. You want to know what it is? It's the cross. See, we don't have to run around all here. We just go straight to the cross. Right? Because it's finished. It's taken care of there. But we run around and we turn around and we look at ways. And then we go, we want to do it our way. We waste our energy in thinking that, you know, that God's not involved in our life. How many people like when God's involved in your life? Until he says something you don't want to do. Mm, I went from, mm, 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 mm. It's true, all of us. Everything's cool until God wants you to step out. To God said, hey, how about that? How about giving? How about doing? How about serving? All those things. It's not about a comfort zone. It's about a relationship. Look at this. I love this scripture here. Y'all ready? Psalm 139, 7. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? That sounds like God is everywhere. Amen? That's the God we serve. Amen? That's the one who loves us. So why not use our energy to run towards him? God knows everything. He's made everything. He's everywhere. And all his power is available to us to help us. Okay? So take a look at this. I had a few things. The most tragic thing is this, that we find ourselves running from the best possible path. Man, I talk to a lot of parents. I am a parent. Does it break your heart when you have the best path for your child and they choose another one? I don't care if they're a doctor or a lawyer. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you lay things out and you say, hey, look, I'm telling you this because this is the truth. 
I'm telling you this because I love you. I'm not trying to muscle you. I'm not trying to do this. I want you to make your own decisions, but I want you to make smart decisions. You know? My dad would end most conversations. But son, you're a man now. Make your own decisions. But I want to give you all the tools so that you can make the best decisions. Today, I pray that I give you all the tools to make the best decision. You know where I'm getting them from? God's toolbox, his word, amen? That's where we're looking at today, the all-knowing, all-loving God. And so we run and run and run. But there's good news. Y'all ready for this? We got a God that is relentless in pursuing his children, amen? Woo! Anybody ever play tag? You know, get out there, and you got the one guy that never tires out. I mean, your tongue is hanging out, and he just, he's just still after you. He's still going after you. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. You know what? That's God's love. That's just a little picture there. See, but God means it for good, okay? He has the ability, he has the love for us to continue to come and, and, and just pursue us. I says, thankfully, as his children, God never lets go. And he pursues us in an unending love affair. There is a lot at stake. There is a lot at stake. That's why we do what we do. That's why we talk to people in McDonald's. That's why when we're in the line, we talk sharing about Jesus. That's when we go to the hospital and you get on the elevator with me. Guess what? You're going to hear about Jesus because that's the main thing, keeping the main thing the main thing. But not only that, once we come to the saving knowledge of Christ, we got to keep blowing on them flames of, of faith. We want to keep on rolling. We want to keep on moving. We want to keep growing. How many people, don't, they don't want to try, they want, you want to see your child grow up, right? You want to see them do well, you know? If they're acting like they're 12 years old and they're 25, you're not going to be pleased, are you? Man, I was going to say, can I rent a room? I wouldn't even have to rent a room. I could just say that, right? But, you know, we want to see them develop. God wants to see us develop into all that we can be. And he gives us the tools. He gives us overs, fresh starts. We can blow it and we can still come back. Let's keep on going. Aren't you glad that God is not a quitter? I'm going to ask this real quick. How many people like quitters? I can't find a hand in the house. Isn't that something? Because when you're on that team, I don't think we get enough team sports sometimes. You know what I mean? Together. You know? But you have a part to play on that team. I played baseball. didn't play much football. Hey, let me tell you, I'm counting... When Jeff's, I'm counting Jeff, he's going to catch that ball in center field. And he didn't let many of them get by there. Usually if he did, it's because he had a big thing of double bubble, <laughs> blowing a bubble. But, man, I can see him right now. I was the catcher. Boom. I'm like, Absher, you got to get that. You got to get that. You got to get it. And Jeff, sit there. Sit there. Bam, get it. Man, teamwork. And he threw it through my, 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 my little shortstop guy. His name was Erky. <laughs> Erky. Eric Hollier, and he could throw fast. I'll just throw this in on, on the sidebar here. And see, sometimes we're playing with the team, and then sometimes it's going to be about me, right? My little girlfriend was there. She was in the fifth grade. Let me tell you, I was up there. I was like, I threw that mask off. I'm ready. This big guy's coming home. I said, I got him, boy. I got him right now. I'm blocking that plate. I see Erky wind up. I got him. I glance over and see my girl's watching. She's watching. I put my glove up there, and man, this guy is gaining territory on me. And my man, I'm like, throw the ball, throw the ball. Whew, he throws the ball. And right when he's there, I got to tag him. My girl's there. My dad's chewing major tobacco. Dad, we got to get this, right? So I tag him before I catch the ball. Boom! I heard everybody in that whole place go, ooh. And I heard my dad, get the ball. He's coming home. <laughs> get the ball. Dad kept the focus. I was going, what happened? And I'm thinking, I hope my girlfriend won't work watching that. <laughs> so I got that, and my, my, my coach said, come here, come here. He was such a nice guy. He said, son, how you doing? I said, that hurt. He said, it looks like it. it was a big knot on your head. I said, he said, you want to go out? I said, no, I got, I got to redeem myself, man. I got to redeem. He said, okay. He said, here, put this back on. I put a thing on it sitting up like this. You know, the, the little face mask on it. He said, how many fingers I got? About to say two, two. He said, good. My dad said, get in the game. I'm in it. But guess what? I kept making mistakes. 
<laughs> Probably because I was about knocked out, but no, because I kept worrying about the one I made before. You see where I'm going with this? I stepped out, all about me. I blew it. Worried about what the, my sweetie pie was going to say, what the dad was going to say, everybody else was going to say. The coach said, look, I'm going to keep you in the game. You know, just keep doing what you do, right? So there was a lot of lessons learned in there. Keep your eye on the ball. Today, keep our eyes on the Lord. You see what I'm saying like that? You say, how are these crazy stories wrapped around? Man, God is teaching us all the time something. Something. Man, it's amazing. But you turn around, and then we, we get all upset and go, well, you know, I didn't want to play anyway. No, no don't quit. They weren't going to let me quit. You know what my dad said on the way home? Not much. He let me take my little girlfriend home, dropped her off, everything else. He said, how's that onion, boy? That's what he called my head. I said, it hurts. Spit the tobacco out. He didn't say, well, you said it. He said, did you learn anything? I said, yeah. He said, okay. All good. He didn't go in and tell mom, you are not going to believe what he did. He, he did, did you learn anything? Teachable moment. He said, you might want to put some ice on that head, boy. And my mom said, oh, my baby, look at that. Oh, Ruthie, you know he's going to have trouble with that head soon as he's born. Look at it. <laughs> my dad was funny, man. And I'm not kidding. He always gave me something like that. But through those things, don't quit. Even when you make a fool of yourself, get back up and don't quit. God's not a quitter. He's not giving up on you. He's not pulling you out of the game. He's keeping you in there. That has been, I was 14 years old when that happened. It was a Saturday. I remember it very good. But you know what I remember more than all that? What did I learn from it? See, a lot of times we'll go through something and we'll rehearse the hurt. I'm not rehearsing the hurt. It's kind of funny now. But I'm going to tell you what. I'm thinking about it, though. See, when I'm playing up there and I hit the wrong chord, I said, don't worry about it. We'll catch the next one. We'll catch the next one. If you get down on something in your life and you keep focusing on it, you'll continue to make more mistakes and more mistakes, and you'll get overwhelmed, and your focus will be on the mistake instead of the Messiah. I hope that's what y'all heard today. So give the Lord a hand clap because he's working all them things together. Amen. <laughs> Look at this. I'm coming back to this again. I want to I just drive this home. I want you guys to just seal this in your heart. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Are you taking refuge in God? Are you taking refuge in the finished work of the cross? Are you saying, you know what? I am secure in Christ. I'm on the team. Not a performance. You know, in, in baseball, football, and different things, you've got to make the team. You know how you make the team of Jesus? You receive the Son. Amen. You receive Jesus. So I hope that you guys hear that today. Stop running. And if you are going to run, run towards God. I got a couple things here. I said, use your energy for something positive, not negative. If you're going to run, run to him. Save your energy. Or at least if you got to put the energy out, you get a better return. Amen. Has anybody ever come up short running to God? I've never had anybody say that. Have you ever come up short giving to God? Have you ever come up short trusting God? Then why do we struggle so much? Because we still got a lot of us in us. Amen. But God has a way to continue to pursue us. And you guys are doing awesome today. And let's keep on rolling. So that's what we, we understand. We run sometimes. We hide. We duck. We, we put it off, right? All those different things. Whatever that decision is that we know we need to make, it's easy to put it down the road. Right? So look at this. What happens if we would just start believing? What do you believe? You say, well, what do you mean? What you believe is going to drive the bus. It's going, to, it's, going to, it's going to chart your steps. What you believe shapes everything you do, everything you become, how you respond, and everything else. How many people love selfish people? We probably need to love them through that. How many people are, love to hang out with selfish people? And those people are wondering, why are they so lonely? Because you've Shut everybody else out. It's amazing. What would happen? I got this in here a couple times. What would happen if we stopped complaining and started praising? Woo! I could shut the camera down right now, couldn't I? I mean, that's the message right there. I'm preaching to me. I start out in the morning choosing to be grateful. Choosing to be grateful. How about that? Because once I choose that, all I got to do is manage the decision. I'm going to be grateful. 
I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to be thankful, right? But if I just wait to see how things are going, then I'm letting the day shape me. Is that right? How y'all doing? Well, that guy didn't even say nothing to me when I came in this morning. Can you believe that? I know everybody's not going to jump up and be, Lord, Johnny, you know, you know, rainbow boy or whatever. You know, I don't know. Everybody's looking at, what's that? I don't know. I'm just talking about happy all the time. <laughs> this is the problem when you have a live stream. <laughs> You're like, I wish I could take some of this thing back. But you jump out and you say, man, I just want to be happy. I want to do this and all this stuff. And then, but what happens? You let everybody else drive your bus. You let everybody else control how you respond instead of setting it on the foundation of God's word. You turn around and say, well, you know what? The Lord says I'm blessed. The Lord is working in my life. Let's keep on going with that. How do we do that? How do we get the right state of mind? Look at this right here. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It didn't say renewed. It said renewing, ongoing. Amen? Look at that. Then you will be able to discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Amen? See, you, can, you, you start conforming what you think. It's real important what you watch. It's real important what you read. It's real important who you hang out with. Moms and dads understand that, right? Because as much as you want to in influence them, if you're not careful, you could be influenced the other way. That's why we got to keep the word of God in the center of our lives. Amen? We've got to be pursuing that. But see, this is what happens. But the word of God can transform you by renewing your mind with the truth of Scripture. Look what comes next. Then you will be able to discern discernment, to understand, to, to, to get the full picture of, to know what God wants in your life, right? Do you know what God wants in your life? Seek him. Look at his word. He, he, he wants you to be moldable. He wants you to grow deeper in the relationship with his son. He wants us to come to the saving knowledge of his son. He wants us to be able to call him daddy. He wants us to be growing in that relationship with him, but also growing in a relationship with with others. How important is this? How important is this to you guys that everybody you meet knows Jesus? Everybody in your family knows Jesus. Is that important? You know, my, my little pea brain goes all over the place. I'm telling you what. I went to watch Jesse and them, and they had the band concert. I love watching that. You got like 75 kids out there or whatever. Some schools got 120. And I'm out there, and this is what goes through my mind. You ready? Over there, the flags are flipping. You know what's going on? Lord, I wonder how many of those people know you. Serious. Last night I'm sitting there going, I wonder how many people of those know Jesus Christ. Now, I don't think I put that in my brain. I think the Lord's saying, hey, there is a field of folks out there that probably don't know me. Now, I didn't jump over the thing and grab the microphone and start preaching and all that, but I did pray. Lord, tomorrow's your day, and we can start now. But I pray that those folks find their way to a Bible-believing church. I pray that, Lord, you know what? That you use this as a platform for them to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ. You know? There's always opportunities to, to pray. And then Jesse and them sat down and did real good. Another school comes up. They got like 125 folks. And I start thinking, I wonder how many people are saved. I wonder how many people know the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you what. This whole world is pretty crazy at times, isn't it? We've edged God out of church. We're edging them out of the government, you know. There was a time when I was coming up, and probably folks a little bit uh, more mature than me, how about that, I'll say a little older, right, that when you got up on Sunday, it was weird if you saw a car in the driveway because everybody's going to church. It's the other way around now. It's the other way around. How much more do we need to be diligently pursuing with God has for us. So we want to start believing and we renew our mind with the word of God. And as we do that, we grow closer to God. What's God's heart? That people will know him. That people will turn from their sin and come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So shouldn't that be our mission? Shouldn't that be what we believe? Take a look at this. John 14, 1 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. We focus on so much negativity stuff. We talk about this from time to time. You watch the news. I go, go through the news. I go, there's got to be something good that happened today. I mean, there's got to be something. Somebody saved somebody's life with CPR. Somebody rescued a cat. Something. You know, give me something, you know. And see, but we feed on that, and we keep renewing our minds with the wrong thing. I think it's good to know what's going on in the world, but don't be sucked into it. 
Let's renew our, wor- our minds with the word, and then we impact that world. You see what I'm saying? Then we make the changes, you know? You ever seen anybody, well, what happened? We was in this wreck and everything else, and the guy comes out of the car and everything else, and they said, it was a miracle, and I just want to tell everybody that. Just, they cut, cut it right out, you know? It, it's amazing how we have edged God out, but he's not done. He's not a quitter, amen? You're not a quitter. We are not going to roll over. We're going to start believing God's word. And we're going to start believing that we can be difference makers. Here we go. John 3, 18. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's only son. A lot of times when we're witnessing, people think that we're beating them up with the Bible or whatever like that. No, we're going to try to love you to the Lord. We just want the best for you. Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad somebody told you about Christ? Aren't you glad that somebody says, hey, I want to tell you about the love of God, amen? How about that? When you start taking and grabbing hold of that, don't be concerned about what you don't know. Just tell them what you do know, amen? That's a good word right there. Don't worry about all the stuff you don't. There's lots that I don't know, but I can tell you what I do know. God's good. I know that Jesus Christ saved me. Make it personal. Halloween just came up, just, just passed. That's a crazy time for me. You say, oh, what, you like goblins? Go, no. People use that, that, I won't even call it a holiday, that situation to come outside the church and tell me and my family about Jesus Christ. Transformed my life. Halloween night, 1995, somebody gave me a Bible track, said if you die today, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? <gasps> I'm going to hell. woo What? I was 30 years old. You remember that? Now, I believe that there was people telling me before, but I was hearing, but I wasn't listening. But that day, God hit my heart. Boom! Denise come in the bedroom. I was looking at I was crying like a baby. Mr. Tough Guy, right? What's up? Nothing, nothing, nothing. But we're going to church next week. I know she's going, hallelujah, you know? Let me tell you something else. I don't believe I was a bad guy. But that don't matter. It's about being a God guy. It's about Jesus. I wasn't stealing nothing. I didn't shoot anybody. See, that's what I, that's what I thought. But I didn't know Jesus. I knew about Jesus. But I needed to know Jesus. And man, God didn't quit on me. And he didn't quit on you. And he's not quitting on you guys either. So realize this, God is in the restoration, saving grace business, amen? But he's an awesome and holy holy God. So you're not just going to come to God any way you want. You're going to come his way, and his way is through Jesus Christ, amen? Let's keep on rolling. What else have we got here? We're finishing up with that. I had a couple other things. I said, our believing can either condemn us or not. Think about that. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Already. So look at this. We, we run from God. I'm telling you, let's turn back and run to God. I said, let's start believing in God. Let's think about that. Now, we just started on the entry. What happens if we start believing God for healing? What happens if we start believing that God can do whatever he says he can do in his, in his word and more? What about in his word where he says that you will do even more? What happens, man, is your faith growing today? I pray that it is. What happens if we just trust God for who he is and what he said and that his word is true? How many people believe his word is true? How many people are opening that book? How many people are reading that? How much time? I've said this many times. If you had an hour meter on your Bible, how many hours would you rack up this year? 15 minutes? 2.9? Days, 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 days. I read this all the time, and guess what? I learn something new all the time. All the time. I'm looking in there. I, I, hey, you say, well, I don't remember. I, put it on your iPad. Put it on your smartphone. Put it wherever. Put, put, put Bible scriptures on your refrigerator. I'd be a scholar if I did that. Woo, I could just keep learning all I like to eat. Right? Or what about on your mirror? Man, get God's word in your heart, and then you'll get God's word in your actions. When we keep renewing with that. So I'm not talking about just belief. First, I'm talking about coming to a personal relationship with the Lord. And from that, guess what? We begin living. I want to get to this. Don't wait till you're half dead. What do you mean? 
I mean, don't wait till you get a bad report. Don't wait till this happens. Don't wait till you get to this age. Don't wait till start living now. Man, I tell you what, I try to squeeze so much life out of life. My kids even said, Dad, you need to slow down. I said, no. I want to get with it. I want to see everybody I can see. I want to talk to everybody I can. I'm phone calling. I'm texting. I'm doing this. I want to be on fire for the Lord. How about you? Because I'm going to tell you what. I don't think I'm going to make it that long. I hope I do, Lord. This, I have not been kind to this body, people. How about you? But I'll tell you what. What I'm carrying in here now is the real deal. It's the love of God. I, man, God's blessed me with so many different relationships. Man, I want to share that in there. How much do you invest in other people? Time, cards, call, prayer, forgiveness. Let me give that again. Forgiveness. I've had people forgive people for some crazy stuff. but then they won't forgive me for making a joke. I said, well, Lord, you know, I'm sorry. I have no control over them. You have no control over them. What we can do is try to just listen to the Lord and control what God has for us to do. Amen? For, for us to begin living, we really need to step out in that. Look at this. Got a lot of scripture here today. 1 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Man, I love it. God has not given us a spirit of fear. What is fear robbing you of in your life today? Think about it. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I can really sing. I don't really want to sing out loud with everybody here. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know if I could really make the baseball team. Well, I don't know if I really could cook that pie as good as Sally Sue or whoever. I re you see, you, you start allowing that fear to come in, and fear starts building a wall between you and God's best. Faith will tear that wall down, and you will start receiving things from God, and you'll start understanding, you know what, it's no big deal. I'm going to trust God. I would never even walk this way to get up here to share anything if I was standing on what I could do. I get amazed what God does through you guys. Man. And I'm going to share that real soon, probably the end of this month. I'm going to talk to you guys about some more stuff that you guys have been working on, and I want to pull it out. I just want to do it just right. I want to give the Lord just, just all the praise for that. So be thinking about that in different ways that we can be used. Now, here's something else. I said review the testimonies. What I mean? There's a method to my little madness here. You know, if we had some visitors coming in the last few weeks, right? We had my man Vic coming from, from he, he lives here, but he's from Kenya. I had Gordon share about different things, being overseas and different stuff like that. Why did you do that, buddy? Did you just want a day off? Nope. Why did you do that, buddy? Because I know God can use other folks to broaden our perspective on him. You remember one of the things Vic said? He said, when I was eight years old, they sent me to school. If you listen, I'm just teasing. We do this all the time. And at eight years old, he was doing all his clothes. He was doing all that stuff. I didn't do any of my clothes till I was divorced the first time. And it was not good. So you start out, you got whites, you got colors, you got jeans, and whatever else. And then a week goes by, you got jeans and everything else. And then a month goes by, you just put them all in there. Right? Am I the only one? That's why Denise don't let me do it. I just put it in there. It's clean. It's going around. Look at that new color shirt I got. <laughs> you know, but if I, if, if I would have been learning along the way, right, if I'd have been helping out along the way, it might be different. But we can learn from testimonies of other folks. You can always learn from somebody, amen? Try to learn something new every day, but line it up with the Word of God. You know what, when I look at people's lives and study different people's lives and, and, and the life of Jesus, and then I look at the life of, of, of men and women that God used through, through the Bible, it wasn't like they were the perfect candidates, were they? Think about that. God spoke to me. I said this before. I was coming down here to a Bible study. God said, I'm going to use you in the ministry. This is what's going on, and I'm crying and driving and everything else and going, my goodness, uh, this is, doesn't seem right. I don't know what in the world. Uh, I don't know all these things. And God's saying, look at this. Look in the Bible. Look at the Bible and see what's going on. Here we go. We're right over here. Look at the Bible. Look who God has used in the Bible. Did God happen to use people that were just pretty? Did God happen to just use things of people that are just smart? Guess what? We got room for you, right? 
Think about that. God used old folks, young folks. You know what he did? He used available folks. He used available folks. Are you available? Man, I just want to be available. You know what? I say this a lot. I just love my mind. You know, somebody say, hey, can you do this? I say, I ain't too busy. I know that's not good, good English, but people like it when you say it. Because when they need you, say, hey, man, can you come get me? My car's broke. I ain't too busy. That's nice, isn't it? They never correct your English then. Hey, man, you got an extra dollar. I ain't too busy. But then sometimes we get picky. Well, it should be this way. It should be that way. It should be just so, right? Life is not going to be just so. It's going to be so. So check this out. When we turn around and look at those things, we need to turn around and embrace those testimonies. But what is your testimony? See, this is something, it's a privilege that, that I have as a pastor, get to talk to other folks and see what's going on in their lives. But this is something that's amazing. When we sit down at Bible study and everybody's talking stuff, everybody don't know everybody else's business in the background. I know a little bit more because maybe they share that, and I'm not going to share that. But we can be real quick. Well, you ought to just go ahead and do this and that and this, that, and everything else. Everything's fine. You don't know that they've lost somebody. You don't know that they've come through this. You don't know their, their background. So a lot of times I say, we need to, to, to soften the blow and love people where they are. See, we think, you're supposed to work, you're supposed to do just like me. You're supposed to do it just like me. Boy, aren't you glad that we don't do it just like me. We need to be doing it like God. What did Jesus do? Did he meet people where, he went, where they were? Woman at the well? You know, sharing stuff like that? You know, you got people that run through the Bible. What about Jonah? Think about him. How'd that work out for him? He ran, and he ended up being the catch of the day. But God worked that so that he could get him to listen. I pray that we don't have to go through those things, that we listen today. That God is willing to speak to us today. But you know what? You know what I love about God? We have a choice with God. Isn't that amazing? We're not robots. We have a choice. And that's so amazing that God does so many things. And, and, and just to see that. Now, I'm going to take just a minute here. And I want to say praise God. For Glory and Dave, our church family here, they have been through it. And you say, well, why do you say that with choice? They have chosen to see the best in a really tough situation. Tougher than anybody, I think, I, I'm never going to say, oh, I know what you mean. I don't know what you mean because I haven't been through it. I do know this, that's tough. But they have chose to trust God. Isn't that amazing? Through one word at the right time gave them something to cling on through the rough times. Everybody got bracelets in here, don't they? God's got it. This is God, glory to God. We did a sermon, not a series, but a sermon on God's got it. And that was about the time that he got the information about what he was going to have to deal with. And they chose to trust God through that. And you know what we chose? We chose to come alongside and we ain't backing off. And God's doing some miraculous things in their life and through them. Guess what? This has turned into a ministry. You can't go anywhere around here without finding one of those bands. And it's just bigger than Dave and Glory. It's about you and you and you and you. I go to the bank. They got them. I go to the supermarket. They got them. I go to, I love to eat out. I go to, uh, oh, what's my favorite place over there with the barbecue? Mission. They got them. And in that amazing mission, Mission Barbecue, what's your mission? Is your mission to get the word out? To take what God's allowed in your life, not caused, allowed in your life, some of the things we cause, are you moving on that mission? I want to look at some scripture here and want to break this out a little bit. I know we're running along here, so let's go on and do it. Psalm 33, 20 through 22. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone. Man, we could just run through that real fast, can't we? Let's, let's kind of break that down a little bit. We put our hope in the Lord. Have you put your hope in the Lord to trust in the finished work of the cross? This is, this is, how, this is how I Bible study. This is how I, I see God talking to me. I put my hope in you, Lord. Lord, you're my help. And you're my shield. 
Think about it. I make it personal. I said, in you, Lord, my heart rejoices because you know why? I trust in your holy name. See, there's a difference when you insert yourself in a story or when you insert his word in your life. Amen? See, it's different than, than just knowing about it. It's about knowing him. Let's keep on going. And I said, Lord, let your unfailing love surround me. Lord, I want your presence all around me, Lord. And Lord, this is the deal. My hope's in you. You ever had a problem so big you can't fix? Yes. We deal with them every day. Have you ever had a problem that God couldn't handle? There are none. They might not come in the time that you like them solved. They might not come in the way that you like them solved. But God is still God, and God is still good. And I'm going to tell you what. Let me, let me just bring this down. If you're going to run, where else are you going to run to? See, in one of the worstest Wor worst worst time, don't you love it? See, that's what I love, because I ain't perfect, and God's still using me, amen? One of the worst times in my life, I cried out to God in a ball on my, on my den floor. And I'm not going to go through all the story, just sick and didn't know what's going on, thought I was having seizures, all this stuff. I said, God, if you don't fix it, nobody can. Nobody knows. Had my brain wired up to this and that and had me going here and over there and medicine here and this and that and all this stuff. And then I'm going, man, what happens if I have a seizure? I'm going down the road. If I'm driving, my kids are young. They're going to take my job, man. They're going to take my job. I can't work like that. <gasps> Got y'all worked up real fast, didn't I? That ain't nothing compared to what's going on in my brain. And I just cried out to God. And that's basically it. Lord, you're my hope. If you don't fix it, nobody's going to fix it. You got to fix it. And I'd like to tell you that the lightning bolt came and I jumped up and I started singing and all that, but I didn't. But God, but God, set me back up and start filling my life again. I started hearing and listening better to the things of his word. I started listening when my friends were going through something, amen? I'm going to tell you what. My compassion level went zero to 60 when people was going through something. I didn't just go, well, man, you know, suck it up, man. You'll be all right. I go, man, I'm really sorry you're going through that. Let me pray for you. And let me tell you what God did in my life. Have you tried this and this and this? Hey, man, let me give you some scripture to, to, to stand on. See, we don't realize we are housed with the power of God. And we can help defuse things in this world by our words and our actions. If they're God-like. All right. So how are they going to be God-like? They've got to be, we've got to be reading his word. Amen? So begin living. See, when you say that to most people, if we weren't here, if I was out, if I was out, we was cooking hamburgers, I said, begin living. Oh, I'm living, man. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get me a new boat. I'm going to get me this. I'm going to the beach. I'm doing this, all this stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. Begin living means this, to start dying to self. You know what I see today many times? Many people don't understand sacrifice. You hear me now? I, I, man, I'll tell you what, we are off the notes here. Don't understand sacrifice. Hey, would you like to do this? No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to just keep on going. You know, it's amazing. I don't know if we've, we've, been, too, we've been too good to ourselves, to our children or whatever. But I'm going to tell you, you reel back 50 years, people could tell you about sacrifice. Now, I'm going to just bring this up. I, I know I talk a lot about my dad. My dad's just a man, right? But I know this. I know that this happened, and I know it probably wouldn't happen these days. My dad was 18 years old, grew up in a coal mine camp. He signed to get in the Air Force. He didn't even get to go home. He said, you signed? Yeah, I got to go tell my mom I'm leaving. No, you're on, uh, you on the train at 2 o'clock, big boy. Tell my mama. I'm going to Texas. <laughs> From the time that he was in the military till he married my mom years later, so he's 18, married my mom probably 25, 20 some years. He sent all his money home. Except he would get combat pay, he would keep that. I wonder, and I'm not, this is not my dad thing, it's a story that I know. I wonder how many people 18 now, what's that I tell you what? 
I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be out getting shot at and everything else, but I'm going to send everything home because I'm going to take care of my mom and my dad and my three sisters. My granddad got caught in, a, in a, a, what they call a motor. His legs got burnt up. When, when you go into it's, it, almost looks like a, it almost looks like a, uh, what do I want to say, a roller coaster. And he would drive that in there into the mines. When my dad worked in the mines, and, and, and it was about this high. I got pictures and stuff. All night, they're under that on his knees doing that. What he did, he learned how to shoot coal. He did the dynamite because it made more money. And he would do that. And they told him, look, man, you're a good ball player. We've seen you over there. If you go over and you make the team, if you make the team at Marshall, we'll cover everything. And when you come back, you'll be sitting right here. Talking about sacrifice. You'll, be, you'll take my job. We'll do that for you. He said, man, I appreciate that, sir, but I can't do that. The guy said, do you not understand do you not understand the opportunity that I'm putting before you, son? <laughs> My family needs me. I got to provide. Wow. Sacrifice. Not a dad thing. Sacrifice things. We won't even slow down. We get upset if the air conditioner don't work at church. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking to all of us. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. Think about that. Well, oh, I'm not going to give because I don't want to do this. I'm not going to help this person. I've got to take care of me. Uh, you know what? Just let God work on your heart. And if there's some areas of your life that you need to let go of, he'll help you. But see, so many times we want it our way. We want it now. We don't give up anything. Well, I don't want to do that. Whatever happened to hospitality? Whatever happened to some? You know what I love when I, when I, I, I visit some of our folks here? Love it. Love it. Go see Miss Madge. Guess what? Cuckoo. TV goes off. Right there. We're talking. I go see Miss Georgia. Mr. Charlie was there. Stops everything. How you doing? How's your day? Talked to Miss Georgia this week. She's doing good. Continue to keep her in prayers, and she appreciates everybody's prayers. What happens if you would just take a little time? And see, first, we got to take time with the Lord so God can adjust our hearts so we can take time with others. I say all those things to share that. And I know this. I know how our minds are wired. We can remember a story more than we can remember anything else. So I tell you these stories so you can insert yourself in the stories. Man, there's sacrifices to be made. Look at the people in the military. You know what I hear sometimes? It drives me crazy. Well, they signed up for it. Well, you know what? I'm glad they did sign up for it. And I'm thankful for everybody who's ever served, who will serve and continues to serve. Amen. And I mean that. I mean that. Because of the men and women that have given everything and given their life. I don't care if they signed, didn't sign. A lot of people didn't sign. A lot of people got told. As my buddy says, violent told. Right? But it didn't back off. There was a time when that flag meant something. Now they just let it run around, so many people. There was a time when that cross meant something. And I'm going to tell you what. I pray that it means something today. But there will be a day. There will be a day. That, that cross is going to mean everything. Now, for those who believe, it already does. But on Judgment Day, they're going to say, how did I miss it? Because you were looking at self instead of looking at the Lord. And I know today we have been all over the place on this message, but I hope you hear the message. Man, stop running from God. Run to God. Start believing his word, then you can start living. Amen? Let us pray. Father God, I thank you today for the boldness that you give us to proclaim the best news ever. And that best news ever is a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray today that you take this message and make it so much more than what I could share. Lord, I want to get out of the way so folks can hear the truth, to be encouraged in the Lord. Friends, if you're watching today and you say, man, what in the world? What's going on? I, what, what? Man, let me break it down. It is all about Jesus. If you're here today and you say, you know, buddy, I, I hear the stories and I hear this. Look, make it personal to yourself. I ask the question all the time. If you die today, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? Remember I talked about a guy, old buddy Lee? He thought he had it under control. I didn't. God's got it under control. God's got it. 
And there's one way to heaven. It's through a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think about this? You think about a courtroom setting while we're sitting here and just our hearts quiet. And there's the law. Say it's a speeding ticket, whatever. You're doing 35 and a 25. You broke the law. So there's a penalty with the law. And so you go to court and you stand before the judge and he breaks the law books open and he says, hey, you broke the law, you're guilty. And now the ramifications that it's coming down. He says, you know what? It's going to be a $5,000 fine. Just pick a number. And you say, I can't pay that fine. I don't have that type of money. But before the gavel even comes down, somebody jumps in front of you and says, I love you so much, I'm going to pay your fine. That didn't mean you weren't guilty. That means that somebody's love and grace and goodness came in and interceded for you. You said, buddy, what in the world are you talking about? That's what happened on the cross for our sins. We broke God's law, but we get God's grace through the perfect sacrifice, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is the one that paid the fine. He is the one that gave the sacrifice. We talked about sacrifice today. You say, well, buddy, what what do I got to give up? (laughs) Yourself. Get out of the way. Let the pride go. Let everything else go. And humbly come and say, Lord, you're right. Just agree with God. You know he's right. You know we've sinned. You know we missed the mark. Everything the Bible already says. It says all the sin and fall short of glory of God. You say, okay, buddy, I got that part. Now what? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn from your ways. Turn to his ways. Receive what God has for you. Lord, come into my life. Ask him. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you are the son of God that comes to take away the sin of the world. And I'm making it personal today, Lord. Forgive me. Save me. I'm calling on your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. If that's you today, and maybe you're online and you prayed that prayer or you want to know more about that, contact us. And if that's you here today, we rejoice with you that God has set you in the family uh, of believers. But it doesn't stop there. There's so much more that God has for you. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. We're going to send you out with a song. It's called The Feet of the Father, all right? Let's praise him.
second to sign off to our friends online. And man, I hope everybody was blessed today. Hey, friends, I hope you guys were blessed today. I hope you uh, really tune into the message with your heart. If you got any questions, always send us a note. Uh, thanks for the support. Do us a favor. Be part of this. Hit the share button. It might change somebody's life. We love you. Bye-bye. Amen.